two brand new, well, all right, returning auto rifles in the Summoner and Prosecutor have both just launched to raving reviews, and today we're going to talk about them. Do a little comparison talk. Yeah, you get it. So let's talk about the Summoner first. I really don't know where to start with this thing when it comes to PvE, because this gun is absolutely loaded with some of the best offerings in the game. First major column, we got subsistence, maybe overflow. I guess the first column isn't as loaded as I thought. Heel Clip, I know, has gained a ton of popularity recently, though, thanks to the buff it just got, but I have not used it that extensively yet because I have not gotten anything worth anything that has Heel Clip actually on it. The second column, though, I mean, incandescent. Target Lock, more of a PvP choice. Same with maybe Kill Clip, but then you have Onslaught and Golden Tricorn and Rampage, although Rampage isn't as desirable as it used to be. You really have your pick of the litter out here. Mashing, pretty much any of the perks I just mentioned are going to treat you very well. Do keep in mind that Ross Arago 4, which can also get subsistence Onslaught, is also a 600 RPM like the Summoner. So if you already have one of those, then the only reason I think you need another one is simply if you want a solar version of it. Now, the most recent release that may be a competitor to the Summoner when it comes to solar autos is specifically Koronok 22, which is, I think, just a world drop. However, I think its first column perk choices are a bit weaker in the PvE world, like the best thing it has is Feeding Frenzy, which isn't anything remarkable. It also has much weaker stats overall compared to the Summoner, although the base recoil direction is a bit better, which is something I care about. But when it comes to PvP, they're somewhat comparable when it comes to perks, or god rolls, rather. Zen Moment Target Lock is a great combo on Koronok 22, especially for controller players, and especially now that Zen Moment actually does something for keyboard and mouse players. The Summoner can also get Zen Moment and Target Lock, which is considered a decent roll. The Summoner can also be earned in an Adept form, giving access to Adept mods, which does give it another leg up, though. But, if you're not in a hurry to hang out in Trials for a while, Koronok 22, if you happen to have one, is a pretty suitable replacement, although not exactly in your control to earn. When it comes to minor perks, I am a huge recoil direction enjoyer, so I need to have arrowhead break on basically everything that has low recoil direction stats, and then ricochet rounds or high cal rounds, whatever gets you more range, is going to work in the minor perk columns. Am I in a huge hurry to run the summoner in PvE right now when SMGs are still as dominant as they are? Not really. I know that Rosarago 4 surprised me in a recent video review, but it should not surprise you to hear that I haven't used it since that very video. Maybe if I get a subsistence incandescent roll, I'm open to trying it out over my Callus Mini Tool, but I'm not exactly trying to fix what isn't broken. I will say that this is one of the faster firing weapons that can roll with incandescent in the game though, with only SMGs and traces beating it out. And considering how many people I've seen ask about trying to get a callous mini tool recently, this might be something to go hunt down. Again, if you're willing to sit in trials for it. Now let's talk Prosecutor. Prosecutor can be a PvE weapon, but it's just not really one I'm in the business of considering right now. It can get a pretty novel perk combo in Dragonfly and Volt Shot. Lots of explosions and chain damage. And as I recently discovered, Dragonfly isn't the absolute garbage that it used to be quite a long time ago. It's actually very good now. This is also the first auto rifle since Dark Decider from Iron Banner that can roll with Volt Shot. So if you are in the business of Volt Shot and you really like auto rifles, then, you know, I think you should consider, especially since getting Prosecutor is incredibly simple. It drops from the first boss of Prophecy, of which you could do your three kills on your three characters in about 10 minutes in a group, not even saving your checkpoints. Keep in mind that it's not the only thing that drops from the first boss, though. Am I taking Prosecutor over Subjunctive or the Ikelos SMG for PvE purposes? 
probably not unless I specifically need an auto rifle for whatever I'm doing. Maybe I need some anti-champion stuff. Subjunctive is arguably better than Ikelos, and it's available to earn until Final Shape launches, being one of the top weapons of the year that I think you should go get the pattern for. So at least go get that. Prosecutor has been making the rounds as a PvP weapon more than a PvE one, and that's for very good reason. It has stats very similar to Amit AR2, which is a craftable weapon that basically everyone should have by now, unless you're brand new. But it can get an arguably better perk roll than Amit. Amit's best rolls are things like Dynamic Sway and Tap the Trigger. A very good roll in its own right. I'm not saying it's bad. And it's craftable, so you just throw a bunch of materials at it, there's no waiting around, and boom, you got your god roll. Prosecutor can get something like Zen Moment or Keep Away with Target Lock. Now, Target Lock's effect might not seem super important to overall time to kill, but it can change how many types of shots you need to kill certain targets, which can be important. Against people with Tier 8 to Tier 10 Resilience, it has no effect, but against people in the Tier 3 to Tier 7 range, probably a range that a lot of casual or regular or average players find themselves in, you go from needing 6 headshots and 1 body shot to 5 headshots and 2 body shots. Again, doesn't sound like a huge deal, but it can sway things on occasion, especially for the Giga Crucible gamers out there with robot aim. It can also kill in 11 shots to the body compared to Amit's 12, but it does require you to not miss while dealing those 11 shots. I realize that the average Crucible player may not even see or feel the effects of target lock in moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, but it is still something that matters in a game where the difference between getting a kill and not getting it could be a body shot versus a headshot. Also, the origin trait crossing over is pretty good in a world of historically negligible origin traits. The top half of the mag has increased range and handling, the bottom half does more damage. Minor perks, again, I'm going with Arrowhead and Ricochet Rounds, but you're at the mercy of the drop here. So, that brings us to Summoner v Prosecutor for the moment. Now, I know what you're maybe thinking. Dado, are we really gonna sit here and compare a 600 RPM to a 450 RPM auto rifle? And my answer is, yeah, because auto rifles are really good in PvP right now, and I think it is an acceptable question to be asking. That's probably why you clicked on the freaking video in the first place. I've played with both weapons in PvP for a while this week, and there are definitely things that I like and dislike about both. Before I talk about more, I just want to say that all of my armor mods were the same between the two experiences. I just swapped the elements for the correct elements. The summoner adept roll that I got was Zen Moment with Kill Clip or Golden Tricorn. Never did I think Zen Moment Kill Clip would be considered a god roll, literally the most mid-2019 sounding ass roll of all time. But, you know, hey, here we are. I ended up preferring Golden Tricorn a bit more over Kill Clip, even though Kill Clip results in a higher damage buff. This is because Golden Tricorn activates instantly on a kill and has a slightly longer duration. And while the time to kill times between both perks is somewhat substantial, most of the time, if you have a damage perk and the person you are fighting does not, you're pretty much going to win every single time, assuming all other things equal. The summoner has enough ammo in the mag that transferring to a new target and being able to outgun them is reasonable when you proc Golden Tricorn. Something I will say is that in the hours of playing with the Golden Tricorn roll, the amount of times I got to an X2 proc of Golden Tricorn was zero. Even on Solar, a subclass that has pretty good ability kill potential. I would not be using Golden Tricorn for the X2 bonus unless you really know how to make it work. I had an Adept roll as well, so I played around with some of the weapon mods, and I think I preferred Adept Counterbalance overall. My thumb skill is... it's not so good. So recoil control is super valuable to me. The less I need to correct it, the more I can try to focus on my aiming. 
I would much rather have full control over my gun and try to position myself better or in my most optimal ranges than have a lot of extra range or target acquisition, but I still need to compensate for both my aim and the recoil of the weapon. I preferred counterbalance for me personally, the way I play, but I will say that none of the mods gave me a statistically significant difference in my performance. That is to say, you cannot just swap weapon mods and hope that your problems go away because I don't think they're going to. My prosecutor role was Zen Moment and Target Lock, probably one of the best roles for PvP, all things considered, and I was graced with Arrowhead Break and Ricochet Rounds, so I'm working with one of the best roles possible. I think only my masterwork was, I mean, it was, it was handling. What I liked about Prosecutor was that the slower rate of fire meant that it was easier to control my weapon and thus I could hit headshots a bit more reliably. The boost from crossing over, the origin trait, was nice in the top half of the magazine as a free range boost as someone who is typically a compulsive reloader. I will say that I rarely noticed the effects of the increased damage in the bottom half of the mag during my gameplay as a result. I saw it pop up here and there. The thing just hits really hard, and it can hit hard from pretty far away, much further than I was really anticipating for an auto rifle, and I really like its ability to chain engage targets. This is one of very few weapons I've played with in recent memory that I felt like I did not need to compulsively reload, that I could just keep shooting and take on two or even three opponents back to back to back, which was a really nice feeling. However, one of the drawbacks is that I did feel like I was completely outclassed by SMGs, like more than usual. This is an auto that I really wanted to play from a super strict auto rifle range. And anytime I could feel myself getting a little too close, I needed to remind myself to kind of back it up. The more you focus on playing in this strict auto rifle range, the better I think you're going to fare. I think I preferred using Prosecutor a bit more than the Summoner, but I will also say that my performance using both weapons were not terribly different from one another. I had games where I popped off. I had games where I played like garbage. There wasn't enough of a difference where like, you know, I was dropping 40 bombs on people over and over again using one of the two weapons. Ultimately, I do think it comes down to preference on what kind of RPM of auto rifle you like. I'm also more of an anchor player. I tend to stay back and I read the minimap a lot more and I kind of play off of that. So Prosecutor felt a little more up my alley. It was more my tempo. Although I am learning to play more aggressively thanks to the sweeping changes to PvP recently. We can circle back to Amit real quick as well. Do I think that if I tossed on an Amit, that my performance would be about equal to what I was capable of doing with Prosecutor or Summoner? I think so, yeah. While there are differences between the weapons, we're getting to the point where the benefits are so small that it does feel like only a subsection of the community can really feel their impact, and I do not feel that I am in that subsection. My main issue is hitting shots at the end of the day. That's the hurdle that I'm trying to jump. If my hurdles were a bit more dialed in than that, where I'm at the point where I need every last advantage that I can get, then maybe Prosecutor or Summoner could bring me to the next level. But I'm not at that level, so that's probably why I feel the way that I do. Anyway. I know PvP isn't exactly what y'all come here for, but with me streaming Destiny more heavily these past two weeks because of Twitch drops, I've been spending much more time in PvP lately, and I just wanted to throw my two cents in here for two weapons that I think are going to be getting a lot of attention over the next few weeks. I would love to do a video on my thoughts on the PvP changes. I just don't know if I have enough to say, but I'm definitely having a good time, and that's for one or two really specific reasons that maybe we'll talk about soon. Let me know how you're feeling about these two weapons. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.